Our goal for today is to analyze a plane wave that is normally incident on a, on a boundary. Here's a boundary between two materials, one and two. This might be air and the two-thirds muscle simulant material in our laboratory, for instance. A plane wave, here are the plane wave fronts, is propagating towards this boundary and it's normally incident. That means that it comes in at a 90 degree angle here. This is the direction of propagation sometimes sometimes called DOP, direction of propagation. Also the K vector, unit vector in the direction of propagation is often used. Your book uses a unit vector AP, P for the propagation. The, this is the propagation and the field has a certain polarization. The polarization defines the direction that the electric and magnetic field vectors are pointed. For instance, if this is the electric field vector pointing up and the direction of propagation is in this direction, we know that the magnetic field has to be perpendicular to both of those because this is a T, E, M wave. That means transverse electric and magnetic. So if I put my thumb in the direction of propagation and I put my first finger in the direction of the electric field, my middle finger is going to show me which direction the magnetic field is. So in this case, the magnetic field is out of the board. This is a, an electric field uh, polarized vertically propagating in the horizontal direction. If we give these vectors, let's say that for example this is the z direction and let's say that this is the x direction, then the y direction would be out of the paper. This would mean that the electric field is strictly in the x direction, it means that the magnetic field is strictly in the y direction, and it means that the direction of propagation is in the z direction. Some other possible polarizations, let's do another couple. Let's say that we're propagating in this direction, and at this time the electric field is polarized out of the paper. So we put our thumb in the direction of propagation, we put our first finger in the direction of the electric field, our third finger, our middle finger, will show us that the magnetic field is polarized in this direction. Now let's see what happens when this wave hits the boundary and reflects back. So the transmitted or incident field propagates in the positive z direction and then we get some transmission which is also propagating in the z direction and we get some reflection which is propagating in the minus z direction. So what happens to the polarization of this reflected field? In the case of reflection of this type, the electric field polarization stays the same. The electric field is still going to be vertically polarized, but let's check out the magnetic field. Here's the direction of propagation, here's the electric field. The magnetic field for the reflected wave is into the board. So as soon as we have a reflection, the polarization and the direction of propagation of this wave change. When we're doing this analysis, there are some important things that we're going to be looking at. One of them is the polarization and direction of propagation, the vectors that are involved in this problem. Another one are the various magnitudes. We need to know the magnitude of E and H, E and H, also an E and H term here. We need to know all of those magnitudes. The relative magnitude of E and H, we're going to find one way, and the transmission and reflection coefficients, we're going to find another way. So hold on for the next set of lectures. That's what's coming next.